What's up, 4Runner fans? This is Andrew from Trailrunner Customs, and today we're going to go over how to change the oil on your 4th Gen 4Runner. So my 4Runner is a 2006, but the process for changing the oil is pretty much the same for 4Runners 2003 to 2009. So popping the hood, um, the hood latch is right up under the grill right here. Just washed my vehicle, so that's why there's a little bit of water. But um, coming over to the side, this is what you're gonna look for. You have the oil filter itself right here, and then the oil cap right here. Now on the oil cap, it does say the recommended oil, the SAE 5W30, and that is what I've got today. Like I said, I have some 5W30 oil here. This is the Pennzoil Platinum High Mileage. I don't really think that there is too much of a difference depending on what type of oil you get, but uh, this is just what I went with because it's what the previous owner of the car used and he told me he recommended it. As for the oil filter, I have here the uh, Mobile One Extended Performance. This is the model number right here, the M1102A. It's a pretty common model size. I know some people don't like to use different brands of filter and oil, but it doesn't really matter to me. Um, the one I'm taking off is the same model as well, so it all kind of goes together. It's also worth checking the seal on your engine oil cap. You just want to make sure that this seal right here isn't dry rotted or damaged or anything like that. So now that we have the type of oil and the oil filter figured out, it's time to go up under the car and locate the oil drain plug. Now I don't have the luxury of having one of those super fancy uh, jack lifts like in the professional shops. So what I've kind of done is parked my car on a little bit of an incline here. I also have a level kit in the front that brings it up a little bit. And that's just going to allow me to crawl up under there and loosen the oil cap from the ground. So I went and grabbed my 14 millimeter socket wrench and then I put the little extender on there because there is a little bit of a metal plate in front of where the drain plug is. So you're probably going to need this extender to reach up in there and break it loose. So this is where the drain plug is. I'll get a better view of it in a second, but this is on the passenger side. And it's a couple feet back from the bumper, so you kind of have to get up in there to find it. But uh, yeah, that's where it is. Okay, so we're a little bit closer now. And as you can see, this is it. This is what you want to unscrew. So I'm going to take my 14 millimeter and break it loose. So this is a little bit hard to see, but I have broken it loose. I ended up turning it counterclockwise, lefty loosey. Um, if you're looking at it from the ground, you just go left. And it does take a little bit of strength to break it free, um, but once you get it free, you're pretty much good to go. All right, so I have my oil pan up under where the oil drain plug is, and I'm just gonna unscrew it and try not to get oil on my hands. So here we go. Ooh, just a little bit, but yeah, it's just draining out. Um, it does take a few minutes to drain out, so you're gonna have to wait. So for the amount of oil that the 4th Gen 4Runner takes, it actually takes five and a half quarts, which is a little bit inconvenient because this, this big one, the normal oil bottle is five quarts. So I had to go and get this little one quart bottle. But um, yeah, five and a half quarts is what is coming out. Five and a half quarts is what I'm putting in. While I'm waiting for the oil to drain, thought I might as well enjoy a piece of cookie cake for St. Patrick's Day. All right, so while the oil is finishing draining, the thing we need to do now is remove this old oil filter. Now, for those of you that own a 4Runner, you know that it kind of sucks having an oil filter that is upside down, because when you try to unscrew it, hold on, when you try to unscrew this, the oil leaks out from around here and spills. It's really inconvenient, and in the past, I like try to put a rag there or something to stop it, but one of my friends actually taught me this trick with a water bottle that I'm about to show you guys. It's really helpful. So to break the oil filter loose, I have one of these oil filter little grabber things. These are really convenient. But if you don't have one of these, I would recommend either channel locks or some big pair of pliers. Just something to get it like around so you can twist it off because it can be pretty hard to get off. Let's see if I can break this loose here. Let's start to turn. Yeah, it's coming. There we go. I also removed the oil cap um, to help it kind of get airflow when it's draining out the bottom. 
so i just checked the oil down bottom and it's a very 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 slow drip which means that it should be a good time to take off the oil filter so let's do that now so the oil trick is all you got to do is get a water bottle and you put it where this hole comes out on the bottom because the oil will leak into this here and go through the hole into the bottle it kind of acts as like a little catch pan but make sure your oil isn't hot because you definitely do not want to melt the water bottle. So here we go. So just put it on the hole on the underside and then start to loosen it up. As you can see, the oil is starting to seep out into the hole and into the water bottle. Um, if you have already drained the oil, it shouldn't be too much that's leaking out, but you're gonna need to put this there so you don't make a mess. And then you just, there, a lot comes out when you take it off of the threads. But as long as you have the bottle in there, it should just flow right into it. So you just kind of let that drip out. And um, once it's pretty dry, you could take a rag and wipe up all the excess oil that doesn't drain out. And then you're ready for your new filter. So now you just take like an old rag and put it over here to stop the oil drip and soap up, soak up all the extra oil. And then I gotta get some more of that soaked up, but I just wanted to show you how the water bottle has caught all the oil that was flowing out. And so it really saves you cleanup time and prevents a mess. So I'm just doing my best to use this rag to soak up all the bad oil so it can be clean for the new oil filter. So it's now time to take out your new oil filter. As you can see, like I said, I have the same exact type, the Mobile One. Um, and for those of you that don't know, you're definitely gonna wanna put some oil on this seal. You don't wanna just screw the new oil filter in without the seal lubricated. So usually what I do is I just get some of this oil, put a little bit on my finger and put it on the seal to make sure it's lubricated. So I've poured a little tiny amount of new oil into this cap right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just dip my finger in it and use the oil to lubricate the seal. All you gotta do is just get a little bit and run your finger around the rubber part. Maybe put a little bit on the threads too. But the main reason for this is you just want everything to screw on the car nicely and prevent it from being extremely hard to get off in the future. All right, so we've got it lubricated and now we are just tightening up the oil filter. All you do is just screw it back on and then what I would recommend doing is just tightening it up as hard as you can with your hand. Uh, I wouldn't do it with a, like the oil wrench that I used or a vice grip because you definitely don't want to over tighten it. So just get it as tight as you can with your hand. Just snugged it up right there and I think we're good. All right, so we're back under the car. Now, as you can see, pretty much all the oil has drained out. So I'm going to get my drain plug and replace it. So here's the drain plug. It also has this little gasket. You just wanna make sure that is not broken or damaged. And then I'm gonna clean this off and screw it back in. All right, so I've cleaned off the plug and now I'm going to screw it back in. All right, so I'll just find the hole and tighten it up with your hand. And I'm gonna come back and tighten it up with the 14 millimeter. So I've got my 14 millimeter socket wrench and I'm just gonna snug it up. I've already hand tightened it, but I just want to snug it up a tiny bit. There we go. All right, so now that we have replaced the oil filter, drained all the oil, and reinstalled the oil drain bolt, it is now time for putting in the new oil. So the hard part is passed. All you got to do now is grab a trusty funnel like this one. Um, this one's a little bit longer just because this is on the incline, so if you use a traditional funnel, it'll kind of be sitting like that, and it'll be a little bit hard to put it in there. So I just use this one and I fill it up. All right, so we have the first five quarts in. All we need to do now is add the half quart from the small bottle. All right, so the measurement of how much to put in is on the back. Um, we're just gonna take it down to the half quart mark. To show you, I took it down to this one pint mark and we're good to go. All right, so now that you have your five and a half quarts of oil in, the only thing left to do is to replace your oil cap. 
All right, so now we just need to crank the car and then we will let the oil circulate around, kind of move around on, in the engine and we will check the dipstick. So it started raining on me. I still have the engine circulating the oil, but we had to back up into the garage a little bit. All right, so we just took the dipstick and as you can see, the oil level is pretty much full, right where we want it. So we've circulated the oil and we are officially finished with the oil change. Are you finally ready to make your Toyota stand out? Elevating the style of your vehicle does not have to be difficult. Visit the link in our description to check out TRD Pro Grills on trailrunnercustoms.com.